PhD. Uh, I'm analyzing yeast images. And today we have a yeast image, but it's not a cell image, it's a colony image that we will be working on. And um, this tutorial is a very intro level by looking at all of your um, expectations from this <laughs> tutorial won't satisfy what you need to do for your PhDs. But <laughs> <laughs> at least we will learn how to manipulate the images and do a segmentation. And segmentation is one of the things that are the basics of doing uh, image analysis if you're working with multiple things in your image and you want to segment out individual cells or colonies or whatever you're looking at um, in, your, in your analysis. So I think start finishing off with segmentation is a good way for you to then discover what you can do with the segmentation. So this is a code along. So we start with an um, empty Jupyter notebook and I will type everything that we'll do here. They're pretty short um, uh, little comments. So um, I hope everyone can follow. If there's anything that's going wrong, you can please raise your hand and we can um, we can help you with that. <clears throat> okay, so we'll start with installing the packages we need. So at the beginning, we put uh, matplotlib in line. That creates uh, a nice matplot uh, interface. So, and then we import the matplotlib. And we import NumPy. Oh. How do I make it? No idea. I think you can do the same thing with the chat. So, no. No command. Can you let us know when it's good at the back? Is this okay? Yeah, a little bit. It's fine? Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so we, we import the matplotlib. We'll plot um, the images on using matplotlib package. And we'll use, we may or may not use NumPy, but just to, um, as always, we can put the NumPy as MP. And then we import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT for short. Um, and then we import the scikit-learn image package, SK image. This is what we will be heavily using. And then we will also import some data from there. So from, from the SK image package, we will import data. Okay. So the first thing we will do is to look at um, any kind of example image. So this image that we will be looking is called camera. And we're just going to say camera and assign it to data. We'll use the, fu we'll use the function data. And we're going to get the camera image. So it's just camera in parentheses. And then if you want to see what this camera is doing, oh, sorry. So we have to first um, import all of the packages. And then we import the camera. And what this camera image looks like is if we just type camera and then if we hit um, shift enter, and we'll see that. So in order to run each cell, you have to do shift enter or alt enter if you want to create a new cell at the bottom in your Jupyter notebook. So once we run the cell called camera, we see that it's, uh, it has a data type of uh, unsigned integers. And we just see that these values correspond to pixel intensities of this image, that we don't know what this image is. If you look at the type of this camera variable, then we just say type camera, and then it's a NumPy ND array. OK. And from here, we can then look at what the shape of the image is. So we just type camera.shape as any NumPy ND array we can get the shape. And so we see that it's five, uh, 512 to 512 pixels wide. So it's a square image of this size. And we can get the size of the image in terms of the number of pixels if we just type camera.size. So this just shows us how many um, pixel values there are. 
<clears throat> and then he, now we will plot what the image looks like. So in order to plot any image, we will use the PLT function that we installed before. And there is an image show function in this package. And in here, we are going to type camera. And here, if you can see that it's, uh, so this has only two variables, x and y, pixel numbers, and there's nothing after that. So this shows us that this image consists of one channel, and we'll talk about multi-channel images later on. So just know that this is only a one-channel image. And when we do plot image show camera, and then we run the cell, we see that the image is something like this. And it has a nice green color, but this doesn't mean that it has a color. So if we just in the same cell, if after camera we type in comma and gray uh, in quotation marks, then we will get the actual gray image because it's only one channel. So yes. yes. <laughs> data dot camera. Yeah. So we're using this data function to get any of the um, built-in images that we can extract from the scikit image package, sorry, SK image. Does everyone have their black and white camera here? Cool, okay. So we're going to do some simple stats with this. So we already know how to get the size and shape. But well, we want to know maybe the range of pixel values in this image are. So we have already looked at the camera shape and size. So in order to get the minimum intensity of this camera, we're just using uh, cam camera.min to get the minimum intensity, and that's zero. And then if you look at camera.max, then it's 255. And this 255 uh, has an importance because when at the uh, at the beginning when we just displayed the actual pixel values, we see that the data type is unsigned integer and in eight bits. So in eight bits, uh, it's two to the eight, so it's 256. So the maximum is 255 in this. So we can see the uh, how many bits there are in this image as well. And also, in order to get the mean intensity value, we can just type in camera.mean. And this shows us the uh, average pixel intensity. OK, so, so far, so good. So now we would like to um, download, now we would like to open an image that we have, because we're not going to work uh, with the built-in images from Scikit package. So in the GitHub page, um, does everyone can see in the GitHub page of this? So I have an image that's right in the folder. Uh, in the it, folder. Yes, in the lesson folder. <laughs> Should I type in two? Mm -hmm. Could they directly download it? Like, could they open it to a link? Should should we type in here? And yeah. Okay. So they have to download it. Yeah, so if you type this, you just type this in. Like, So we're here, and then they will need to download this. So. 
Okay, so if you're trying to find this image, if you go to <laughs> github.com slash decoder slash study group, and then in the folder list go lessons, Python, image processing, and then that file, Miss Colony, that's the path. I was looking for these ones even better. Oh, even better, okay. about it. So if you go to the website and then find today's event, and then click on it, the link will also be there. So if you can download this image in the folder that you're opening your IPython notebook. Did everyone download the image? Or... Okay. So um, if you put this image in the same folder with your um, Jupyter Notebook, then we can just type in um, the path right away. So for this, we, are, we need to use another function from the SK image package. So that's why we need to say from SK image, import um, IO for input and output. And then the way we're getting the image is that we need to define what the name of this image will be, and we can name it as colony. And then we're going to put IO dot image red, in red. And then we're going to put the name of the image, is colony array. So if you just open this image, and then maybe we can just say plot im show colony, and then we can see what it looks like. Now you will receive two sticky notes, and the pink one is if you have any problems. So you can just put the sticky notes on top of your uh, laptop so we can see if you could be able to show this image. If you can, then you can put the green, yellow one. If not, you can put the red one, and we can help you. Okay. If you can see this, East Colony array, then you, you can put the yellow one. I know it's a little tricky to download an image and open it, but I had to show how to, so yeah. So 
we have we have an image like this and we've just seen what it is but we need to see uh, how many channels there are and stuff like that so we just need to type as again colony dot shape to see what the shape of this image is and it's um, over a thousand pixels um, in both directions and it has this tree here so it refers to three channels uh, uh, red green and blue so if when we're plotting this, we're, we just said plot in show colony. So this is showing all of the three channels as it is. And this is, these are also referred to as real images. So, but what if we want to only show one of the channels? Let's say we want to show the green, the red channel. For that, we need to just simply say plot in show camera. And from here, we're going to slice because this is a NumPy array. So as any NumPy array, we can get all of the rows with the column, comma, all of the columns with the column, comma, then we can specify which channel we want. So here, if we type in zero, then it will be the red channel, one for green, two for blue. So if we just type in zero, oh, too many indices, 32, so, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, colony, perfect. So here we see again this green, bluish kind of um, colors in this, but this just basically shows um, what one channel looks like and it doesn't have to look like anything. So if you wanna look at the other channels, then they will be the same because it, this just basically treat, treats this as a grayscale image and the blue one will be the same too. So this just shows the intensities, but when we're putting all of the channels together, they create a real image that looks like this. And my image knowledge doesn't get any further than this, so I don't know how the channels do form a real image like that. Um, perfect. And so notice that this plot has these axes that we may not want to, like, we may not care. So in order to get rid of this, we can just, right after this implot, uh, plot in show we can just say plot dot axis and off if you want to get rid of and if you want to get rid of these coordinates that's here we just need to put a semicolon here so here we have a clear nice image and if you want to put a title to this image we can also do that too so for that in between these two we can put plot dot title and here we can just say East Colony. So now we can load any kind of built-in image or any images from outside. So let's do some basic manipulation. So for this, I will be going back to the camera image for now. So let's just load the cam camera image uh, again. So how, how are we loading it? It was data.camera function to get the image. So from here, maybe we want to access a particular pixel intensity. So in order to do that, we just, we just treat the camera as a NumPy array. So we just type in camera, and then we open the square brackets, and we say we want to look at the 10th row and 20th column of the pixels. So we just type in this, and it gives us a value of intensity. So this is just getting a pixel. But what if we want to set a pixel? So we can do that too. So here we just specify which pixel we want to change the value to. So here I'm just going to write in the third column and uh, third row and tenth column of the pixel. I want to set this pixel to zero, to black. So I just do this, and in order to uh, see what kind of effect it has, but we won't be able to see it because it's just one pixel out of uh, 100 thousands, but we can just show it by, again, plot M show camera. And I would like to put the gray here. So as we can see, the it looks exactly like the original image, and in the third row and 10th column somewhere around here, if you can see, there's a black dot. We can actually see it. Hmm? Yes, so now we're going to change the whole row. So in order to change the whole row, I'm just going to type in here again. So here we're specifying third row and 10th column. 
but in order to specify all of the rows in one column, we can just put in um, <clears throat> so if we want to just specify all of the rows in one particular column, we can just set it like this. Um, and this will still keep our, this little pink, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> black pixel here as it is. So here, let's see what this shows us. So it created a line at this spot. So this was, the first one was already zero, so this is all complete zero. But what if we want to, let's say, um, change the color of a region? So what we're going to do is that we're going to take the first 10 lines this time. So this is something else. So we want to look at the first 10 rows, and we're setting it to zero. So once we do this, this will keep this uh, vertical line, and then it will add another black um, pixel layer for the first 10 rows of the image. And we can do that by slicing the first 10 rows here. Cool. So now we want to do something more complicated. So let's say we want to change the intensities a little bit further, and we want to mask certain pixels by looking at the intensity levels. So for that, I will again upload the camera image from the original source because we changed it a lot. So I use the same function again, data.camera. And then what I will do is I would like to mask the pixels that are uh, a little bit darker. So I'm just going to pick a threshold for the pixel values. So 0 was black and 255 is white in this case. So what I will do is I'll create a mask. And this will take the camera image. And it will say true for the pixels that have um, pixel values that are lower than this arbitrary threshold 80, uh, 87. So this will just create um, an ND array of the same shape of this image with true and false. So from here, we just take this camera image and we put this mask. So we're just now taking the pixels. Sorry. Maybe I should have some more. OK. So we just created this mask in the camera image. And we're setting all of this true pixel values to white. So we're going to put 255. And let's see what this looks like for our image. So again, we say plot im show camera and gray. So here, we just took all of the, um, we took the colors that uh, we darker colors and we set them to white. So we can see some of the regions here. Okay. All right. So now I would like to change the image just a little bit so that we can look at some different colors. And sure. so this mask just creates, um, so when we say that data less than 80, 87, right? So the camera image was 512 by 512. So it's a matrix, right? And they have pixel values ranging from 0 to 255. So when we say camera less than 87, this will look at all of the values one by one. And if they are less than 87, it will say true. And if they're uh, greater than 87, it will say false. OK, so we create the same, uh, we create a matrix of this image with the same size, which is true and false. So we had values for the matrix. Now we have true and falses for the image. So, and once we say that, when we say camera and mask, this just automatically takes, uh, turns the true values of this matrix to 255. So we manipulate the actual uh, pixels by masking it. Okay. So now we're going to load a new image from the built-in uh, functions. My favorite animal, cat. So data Chelsea. So. And now we can also plot the cat here. So, and we, if we look at it, this is again a real image, and we can see that from the shape, it has three channels. 
and it has uh, 300 and 450 pixels. Okay. So here, uh, I, I want, I'm not going to change the, uh, so here we are going to change uh, one pixel value again, just to see how we can change the pixel because we're now looking at a multi-channel image. So for that, we're going to again specify a random pixel. I'm, I'm just picking 50 and 60. So I'm looking at the 50th row and 60th column of the pixel. And I would like to set this to something. Remember, before we were just setting it to either 0 or 255 or something else. Now we have to specify uh, a vector because we have three values for each pixel now that defines each of the channels. So what I want to do is to set this one pixel to green. So, yes. So you don't need to specify the channel when you call cat? Yes, because when we call this cat, this should give us a vector as well. So this gives us a vector, and the intensity values for each channel are different. So for the red channel, it has uh, 160. And for that, can you see the numbers from that? OK. So they have different intensity values that then create this real image, so based on that. So if we want to set this pixel to just complete green, what we need to do is to create a vector that um, tells us the RGB green, and that is 0. 255 and 0. So this was the red, green, and blue channels. So we're setting the red and blue to 0 and green to 255. And we want to see the cat. So plot im show cat. So I can't really plot. Uh, is it this one? No. <laughs> I can't really. It should be around here somewhere, a green dot, but we can't see it. Um, it's just like if you want to manipulate certain pixels, we can do it like that. Okay, so now we would like to do another uh, mask. So now again, we are, so because we manipulated the cat, let's just get this back. So it was Chelsea. And from here, I will create a new cat image. And I don't want, I want to keep the original one as it is. So, so that I don't need to load it again and again. So for that, I just created uh, something new. So red cat, because we'll turn this cat, some pixels into red now. So for that, we just need to type cat.copy. And this creates a copy of the cat image, and it will keep the original um, as it is. OK, so now we want to pick the pixels that we want to change. And it's just, again, arbitrary. So we just call it a mask again. And this mask, we want to basically take um, the red channel. And in the red channel, we want to pick the pixels that are over 160. So this will just this is just the mask operator that you put a threshold again on only looking at one of the channels. Because if you look at all of the channels, then you have to specify a threshold with a vector rather than a, and just one number. So, and once we do the mask, then we can set the mask to some value. So we just got the pixels that are over um, a threshold for one um, for one channel. And now we're going to do red cat, and we're going to use the mask matrix again and set this to um, red. So we took. So the red is 255 and 0 and 0. So what we're doing is basically in this mask, we're just choosing the pixels that already give us some red signal. So they have a really high red signal, but they're mixed with the green and blue channel. So we see it uh, in a different way. And then now when, when we do this, we want to see how the red cat look, looks like. So a plot in show red cat. And here, we can see that it's actually setting the colors that are a little bit lighter around these edges to red. And the nose as well. So like around here and everywhere, it just took those pixels. And there. So it, it may look a little bit like unnecessary, but it's just like for you to get familiar with how to manipulate like pixels or what which pixels to get if you're needing and if you need any kind of uh, manipulation. 
So we can do a lot of things. We can turn this into green very easily. We just need to have a mask that really doesn't matter. And then for green, you know that it's zero to 55 and zero. So I'm not going to go more in detail. Uh, okay. I just want to show one more thing before we, um, a couple of things before we go into segmentation. So, don't really have much time left too. But if you want to basically, so the scikit image package uses RGB colors, but you, there are different kind of um, color representations too. So one of them is BGR. It's literally like the, um, if you just invert all of the channels together, then it gives you BGR rather than RGB. So in order to do that, we can just use, um, cat image again because we didn't change it I don't need to load it again so from here we're going to do a slice operation to turn all of the channels so we are taking the red and blue and we're just turning uh, the order and the other way around for that we're choosing all of the rows again all of the columns again and for the channel what we're going to do is we're going to just type in two columns and minus one and this is going to in just basically replace the order in the opposite direction. And once we show that this BGR cat, if you want to look at this BGR cat as an RGB cat, I know it just found, it sounds funny, but it gives us something like an inverse image. So it's treating all of the red pixels as blue and blue pixels as red. So it just gives us that. But if you want to actually invert an image that you want, if you want to take the negative of an image, then there is a, a built-in function so we need to type from scikit image, import util. I'm just going to say inverted cat is util.invert. So there is a function called invert, and we load the original cat object. And once we want to look at this cat, and we see that it's a little bit different than the actual, like than the BGR cat. So this is the inverse, uh, the negative image of it, also called the complementary image. Okay, and if you if you want to see that the actual cat image is not manipulated with all of these operations, we just type in show cat, and we see that the cat is right here. Okay, does anyone have any questions so far? Inverted, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's the function from the SK image package called util. And from util, we're calling the invert function. When we're inverting yeah. it, um, so we can just look at the actual pixels, inverted cat, and uh, Maybe we can just look at the first row and this channel it's pretty long. Maybe if we want to like look at the first 10 and then if we do this again, so the values are slightly different. Um, I don't really know. <laughs> but it's different than just basically converting, like changing the color. So, um, yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Column wise summation. Okay. So, I would like to go over either rescaling intensity or doing some basic segmentation. And I think basic segmentation is, makes more sense for this audience, yes. Um, can you call minimax earlier on? Did that give you zero because zero is the lowest that it gave you bit in the interjection B, or did it give you zero because there was a value in middle? Yes, th that's a really good question. So if you look at the cat, right? Like it's, um, let's say cat min, it gives us zero. And if we, again, 
this doesn't answer your question, but if we look at the maximum value, then it gives us to 31. So it's because when we're because we're looking at the cat, it's basically just a NumPy uh, matrix. So we're just picking the minimum value that's there. But if you look at the data type, then the values can get anything from zero to 255. So a good question. So the rescaling in intensity part is related to these values and how to change them, how to change the data type. But I would like to focus on uh, segmentation uh, because I think that's more relevant. So, and we have 10 minutes left. Okay. So for this, now we would like to look at the pixel values just uh, themselves in a histogram. So again, we're going to use um, one of the images, and I'm picking the camera image because it has one channel. So I'm just plotting that they, I'm getting the camera image again because I don't know if I manipulated before or not. So I'm, I'm just assigning the camera image as image just to type less letters now. And what I will do is when we take this image, there is a function called uh, Ravel, image.ravel. And if you remember, then th this was a matrix. And what image.ravel does is that it takes all of the pixels and it flattens the whole matrix. So we know we can get all of the values of the pixels in one one dimensional vector. So we're going to use this function and we're going to plot a histogram with this. So in order to plot a histogram, it's simple as plot.hist. And here we're going to put this one dimensional vector, image travel, and then we're going to bin it with 256 bins so that we can get all of the intensity levels. And because they're integers, we can specify that. And then um, there are a couple of different visualizations that we can do. So I'm just going to type his type because this really gives us a nice histogram. His type step and the color, I'm going to set it to black, but you can set it to anything you want. So, okay. Once I run this, oh, hmm. unknown property then. I may have done something wrong. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Um, so, here we are looking at the pixel values. So they range from zero to 255, and these are the counts. So how many pixels there are with a specific pixel value. So we can see that there are two main um, category of pixels. This probably refers to um, the background, and if we can look at the camera image, what it looks like. Plot M show camera, again, in gray. Um, sorry, I turned this into image. The name is different now. So here we have a lot of really dark values. So these dark pixels refer to this sharp uh, region here. And the rest is some grayish values. They probably refer to the background and the grass here. So they have this peak around there. So this is cool. So from here, we will do the same thing in the colony image that we opened because we would like to do a segmentation on the colony. So let's read the colony. Uh, let's get the colony back. Oops. So if we just say plot in show colony, we see that it's already um, the original format. And then we're going to do the same thing again here. But here we have three channels. So we would like to turn this three channels into a grayscale image. So in order to do that, um, there's a function that we need to um, use. Sorry. So from skimage.color, we're going to get this function called RGB to gray. So we're just calling this. And what we will do is we will turn this image. So, so I'm setting this as image, and I'm getting the I'm writing the uh, function name RGB to gray, and I'm taking the colony image. So this will just take uh, the multi-channel image that we see into black and white. 
And here, if we just do plot im show image, it will again give us something colored. But just this just means that uh, we only have one image. And if we put, if we look at the shape of this image, then we can see that we lost the other two channels. And this is just one channel only. And if we put the grayscale, we see that the image is gray. Uh, okay. So let's look at the histogram for this image again because we're going to do thresholding on this so i'm just again writing the plot histogram hist and i'm putting image rabel again because i named this as image and bins 256. so i'm not going to do the others oh i need to apparently you can just copy it from the top this really gives us a nicer um, histogram so here from this image we can see that there are again two pixel groups and the darker ones reflect the background pixels and the lighter ones are these colonies so what we need to do is that in order to do a segmentation so what what is segmentation from here what we need to segment is each of these colonies and in order to get the colonies, we can do a thresholding because we know that there's a really big uh, intensity difference between these two. So what we can do is a really simple manipulation. We can just show the pixels that are above a certain threshold. So what we can do is we can just type in plot show, plot im show, the image, and we're going to set a threshold. So we want to capture all of these individual colonies and we, from the histogram, we see that they need to be at least higher than 0.5 uh, with pixel values here. So we can just type in anything that's above 0.5, I would like to see. And the rest, it's just, uh, it's just background. So when I just show, this is basically like a mask right on top of this. So I'm not manipulating the image, but I'm just showing the mask as an image. So it's just true and false in this case. But it does give, give us an image that looks exactly like that. So here, if you type in the imshow image anything greater than 0.5, we see that the, the pixels here are a little bit like geometric shapes because for sure some of the pixels here uh, lay around, he, the pixels that lay around in this region are probably the, uh, are probably the colony pixels, let's say. Okay. But of course, we want to do something more um, complex than this. So what we can do is, um, I'm just going to. Sh I ha so there are two segmentation. Yeah. Why does the x between zero and so? Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> so it's probably the the minimum is so the minimum starts from there yeah w once we turn it into grayscale the values also change too so the maximum would be again in this one yeah mm -hmm. so we lost the unsigned integer uh, 8 bits version when we converted to grayscale so there are two segmentation algorithms that I wanted to go over but for the time being I just want to talk about one of them uh, that's widely used and it's called watershed. So here we just need to download, uh, sorry, install two functions. And this is gonna take just five minutes. So the first one is from skimage.filters import Sobel. And the other one is from, again, skimage.morphology import watershed. So what this, uh, so we'll, we'll see step by step what we need to do. So we will run this. Okay. And the first thing is that we want to see an elevation map. And what this elevation map does is that it's, it's better if we just type in first so that we can see what it is. So we're just going to say, choose this function Sobel, and we're going to put our image and we name it as elevation. And we're going to show the elevation as Im show elevation and gray. 
Okay, once you type these for once you load these functions and then uh, do the Sobel function, then you only see the regions of each colony and just the bordering pixels. So this creates uh, an elevation map in 2D. You can think of it as, let's say we have, we are looking at this table and we have two laptops here and we want to do a segmentation on them. What we are showing here is basically an elevation map that defines the regions of where these laptops are. So we see that they have a higher, uh, they have a brighter color around the edges. And that's what basically is. Okay. So from here, we would like to set um, a couple of different things. We want to basically set the pixels that define the colony itself. And we want to also define the background too, so that we can then differentiate. So we're going to do a, trip, a mask and have three re regions. So this will be more intuitive if I just start typing. So we're going to create, uh, let's say masks. So in this mask, we're going to create the same matrix shape as our image. So we're going to use a NumPy function called zeros like, and we just type image. So this takes automatically the shape of the image we're working with and it initializes a matrix with zeros. So from the, this, ma uh, this masks, we're just going to write masks and we're looking at the image and whatever it's less than 0.35, let's say, because we also have the uh, histogram. So whatever is like below 350 or like we can pick any threshold we want and choosing the thresholds here will actually improve our segmentation too. So it's uh, better if you play around with it. So I'm just setting whatever value that's less than 0.35, I'm going to set it as one. So this is just basically uh, labeling each pixels into three categories. And for the colony itself, I'm just going to say masks, image that anything is bigger than 0 0.55, I'm going to call it two. So we have three classes now, and anything between 35 and 55 will be zero by default because we created an, uh, all zero matrix and let's see what this masks look like so we just plot masks and show okay so here we defined a lot of regions that are middle ground and then we set some to uh, zero or one and everything all of the yellow dots that you see are labeled as two so for the watershed algorithm we need to define we needed to define these yellow dots because they are the starting point of segmentation so first we located these high in like this brighter intensity spots and the watershed algorithm what it does is that it uses that seed and it just expands from it and it expands until it touches some other object that it finds and then it tries to find the threshold between it so you can read much more about the watershed algorithm if you like and now we're going to do this uh, segmentation. Okay, so we create these uh, regions. So what I'm just gonna do is that I'll just write uh, segmentation and this will be the segmented image. So I'm, okay, so, sorry. What's the goal of the segmentation? The goal of the segmentation is basically to get the pixels for each of these objects separately. Because we want to, let's say from this, we have, we have that. But how do you know that how many pixels are there for that yellow? Okay, so what will be the result? I I this is just a very, this is, if you can see that, like there are like a lot of noise in this, like this is just manual, something that we just put as thresholding. And the watershed algorithm like smartly finds these pixel values. So it's just automatically, if you want, if you know the X, Y coordinates, then you can look at that and the region around it, find the neighboring pixels and count it. But there's already a built-in like algorithm that automatically finds these objects together. Okay. So like you can do anything manually too, but these algorithms are like for automatically finding these regions. But we needed to say which pixel belongs to which category so that we can do it. Okay, so we, th we already um, installed the watershed function, so we're just typing that. And we are using the elevation for the elevation to know where it's looking at. 
And then we're also going to feed in with the masks. So it knows the regions. It knows which pixel it's belonging to. OK. And if you look at this image, this image looks a little bit weird. So if you just type in imcho segmentation, it hmm, actually shows us something OK. Um, yeah, but so what there's something weird with this that I couldn't find another way to do it. So from here, we will do um, a labeling part. So here, let me type in labeled. And label. I'm very sorry. There's this another function that we need, but I can't search it here. You can search how I and NDI. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so here we're going to just type in from SciPy. Oh, I must have, I, I should have said SciPy before. And the image is NDI. Okay, so can everyone see this? Okay, with this function, NDI, we're going to use a labeling uh, function from this. So here we already got the segmentation result. And we're just going to put labels on each of these objects that we classify so that we can get information from each of them. So what we need to do is labeled, and we need to get, and this also tells us the number of objects that it finds. So we need to extract two variables from this uh, function. So we're just going to type ndi.label, and we're going to use the segmentation image for that. Okay. So we run this and we see that we can look at the number, how many uh, it finds. Yeah, it found only one. And if you look at the labeled colony, actually, so if you just plot labeled in show labeled, you see that there's nothing here. So in order to solve this problem, what I thought was that, so it doesn't recognize the background as zero. I looked at the documentation of this label function. For this label function, the background needs to be zero. But we already set it to one before when we were doing the masks. If we set this one to zero, then it can't do the segmentation. So in order to get away with this, I know it's a little complicated, but this is just the step after that. So after we mask this, we got the segmentation results. And in here, it's just an image that has zero, one, and two. So for that, we can just change what the one and zero is. So here I'm just going to type in segmentation. And wherever the segmentation equals to one, I'm going to set it to zero. So that now we have only zero and two. So all of the background pixels become zero. And the segmentation image will look exactly the same because all we see yellow here were the two, labeled two. So they will be uh, unchanged. And here. So we have the same image, but just the background pixels are assigned to zero rather than one. OK. And once we do that, then we, if we look at the labels, we can see that the labeled object becomes colored. And each individual uh, colony here gets a, uh, an individual color. And if you look at the number, then it's something like 1481. And this image reflects to a colony that has uh, a number of colonies such as 30, uh, 36 by 48. Oh, sorry. So 36 by 48. So we needed to get um, something like 17 to. Sorry. Okay. So we need to get a number like this. Actually, when I. I don't remember. I don't know how this is happening because 36 by 48 
should give me, I'm doing something wrong, but we needed to get 1,536 colonies from this plate, but um, I probably miscalculated how many colonies there should be. So we're, we, we're missing like around 70 colonies and we can just basically count how many colonies we're missing in this. So it's finding all of the colonies that we want. And um, I had a couple of more things to talk about, but we should be done, I guess. Does anyone have any question? 